Keep your heads up and your arms covered, family. Our redemption draweth nigh. And here's the verse of the day. And it's Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. And this is the perfect verse for today's video. Because I want you to understand something that God showed me that is very clear now. And it's very sad. But at the same time, it's very, very, very comforting. And it's right here. And this is the sad part. On the 12th anniversary of the Syrian war, a total of 230,224 civilians documented as dead, including 15,275 who died due to torture, 154,871 arrested or forcibly disappeared, and roughly 14 million Syrians displaced. In those 14 million plus Syrians displaced, is causing a remnant. And that's the comforting part. And it's Isaiah chapter 17. And you already know verse 1. Damascus shall be a ruinous heap. And when you go to verse 3. The fortress also shall cease from Ephraim. And the kingdom from Damascus. And the remnant of Syria. They shall be as the glory of the children of Israel. Saith the Lord of hosts. In the remnant of Syria, and I just showed you, and this is what they're saying, that over 14 million have fled the country. And 12 years ago, there was no remnant. In the remnant of Syria, they shall be as the glory of the children of Israel, saith the Lord of hosts. Verse 7, at that day shall a man look to his maker, and his eyes shall have respect to the Holy One of Israel. And if you don't already know, Syria has been annihilated. I just showed you some of the numbers that they're reporting. And if you don't know, Damascus is the capital of Syria. And there's 2.5 million people there. Many people have been killed and fled the country. And a lot of them were Christians. And a lot of them were beheaded by Islam for their faith and the remnant of Syria. And if this goes on much longer, there will be no remnant left. Now on to the signs and the sun, the moon and the stars, right where Jesus Christ said they would be. All right, so about a week ago now, we had our first supermoon of this quadrilogy of supermoons with fireworks. And we know the people were asking Jesus Christ for a sign. And the apostles asked him for a sign of his coming. And he said there would be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. Now ask yourself, would fireworks on the first supermoon be a blatant sign from our Father to comfort us and encourage us? Is this a gigantinormous sign? Fireworks announcing the first supermoon of four supermoons in a row. The second one on the day of love, to be off. And the last one on the eve of Sukkot. The Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of Weddings. Yes, I believe so. And I think you know so. And right now, today, there's 12 sunspots showing. And that's the most I've ever seen. And sunspot 3363, which is earth-facing. And in the next, and for the next couple of days, it'll be directly earth-facing, is extremely gigantinormous. It's huge. And if it erupts in the next couple of days, God willing, I'll sound the alarm. And as you can see right here, someone caught another green flash, and it says a green flash in a Ferris wheel. On July 8th, a photographer captured an extra rare green flash in a Ferris wheel. And he said, I was photographing the sunset when I noticed the big Ferris wheel about 15 kilometers down the coast. To my amazement, a green flash beamed through the wheel. It was fantastic. 
and right above that, unexpected solar flare. In a slightly surprising development, sunspot AR-3358 exploded during the early hours of July 10th today. And that could cause more of this. 17 U.S. states could see northern lights this week. And when you scroll down, it says the northern lights, also known as Aurora Borealis, could appear over 17 U.S. states on July 13th. And since this solar flare from AR-3358 just erupted, as you can see right there, I'm sure there's going to be more states than 17 seeing the auroras. So keep your heads up and your eyes open, family. And there's two conjunctions today and tomorrow that I'm watching. Right now, as you can see, on the heart of the lion, Regulus, is what they call the red planet, Mars. And the second conjunction that happens tomorrow is with the moon and what they call Jupiter. As you can see, when you go through the hours, they get very close. Right underneath what they call the god of war, Ares. This false god. And remember, right under Aries is where the last total blood moon eclipse happened on November 8th, 11 8. Now I'll give you a one week heads up to 717. And as you can see right there, the moon and the sun will be together on 717, right between what they call the Gemini twins and the constellation they call Cancer. And here's why that seven day heads up on 717 is gigantinormous. And all glory to our Father in the name above every name, Jesus Christ. At the end of this month, it'll be four years since I put this video out and it only has 2,400 views. I dropped it July 31st, 2019. The 9th of Av was 717, July 17th. Both times the temple was destroyed in history on the Torah calendar. And you can look this up for yourself at TorahCalendar.com. They have Tisha B'Av, the 9th of Av, marked both times on 717, July 17th. And remember, this year on our calendar, Tisha B'Av, the ninth of Av, the worst day in the Jewish people's history when the temple was destroyed twice, is on 726 and 727. And remember, when you go to Bible Strong's Concordance for Greek 726, the definition is harpazo, to seize, catch up, snatch away. And when you go to 727, it's the same. The definition is rapacious. And when you look underneath that, helps word studies, 727, harpax, properly seizing a sudden snatching, properly seizing a sudden snatching, like in a robbery, C726, harpazo. So keep looking up, family. And remember, tonight, the red planet Mars shines beside the blue star Regulus what they call the red planet and the blue star, the heart of the lion. And red and blue makes purple.